what's up y'all back with another video today's video obviously looks a little different i'm sitting down i'm chilling i'm in the house it's summer break of course y'all used to seeing me vlogging and out and about but today i felt the lord leading me to do something different um i'm gonna try to get it all done before my camera dies so yeah um yeah, like I said, I felt the Lord leading me to talk about like my testimony and just how I came to him and how I got like more serious with him. So let's start it. So um, for context, um, I grew up in a very biblically sound home and I'm very grateful for that. Um, my mom and dad went to um, Bible school together. Well, it was through the church they were going to at the time where they met and they had like a Bible school inside like the church. So they went to that and my mom actually graduated. So she has a degree in like bi biblical studies or something. I don't know the exact name, but my dad quit <laughs> and like my mom finished. So I grew up in a very biblically sound home, but... I think it was just like I was born to just love the word. Um, so I think like the nature and nurture like work together. Like I think the Lord just in his sovereignty made me to just like genuinely come out and just like love the word. So um, I think that helped. So my earliest memories is just like um, my Bible is actually downstairs and I'm not going to go get it. But my first Bible was at like six years old and it's just like so many highlights and all that stuff. So it's just like, I felt like I was just different from like all my cousins and friends. Just like, I don't feel like people my age really like care about this stuff. Um, like how I do not saying they didn't, but like not to the degree of what I did. And, um, I had very like interesting encounters interesting encounters with the Lord like from my early age like I got my first Bible at six and I one time I got like sick with this different type of fever named scarlet fever and um it was to the point where like my mom was just <laughs> anointing my bed they had to pick me up and carry me like in the bathtub because I was just like so hot I don't know why they ain't just take me to the hospital but Feel like I went and that was the diagnosis and they was just trying to like manage it at home but anyway they um yeah I was sick with that and I think they were just like taking a break or like letting me rest um but when I was like resting I remember Claire's day I was on my back and like I felt like heaven like opened up for me or something but I know it was the voice of God because I know God's voice now it's just like this most the most peaceful voice I've ever heard in my life it was just like do you want to come with me? And I was like, no, like, <laughs> I want to build my family. Like I want to build my friends. Like, no. Um, so for, for context is like, uh, I think it was like first grade. One of my friends, like we were on the blacktop playground recess time. And then one day she just never showed back up. And then they sent like a letter home was just saying like she passed away. So she passed away at like seven years old. And it's just like, wow, people my age can die. So <laughs> not that that's funny or anything, but like I was just so shocked. Like, wow, people my age can die. And I'm just like, the Lord's asking me to come with him. I'm like, no, I don't want to be like her and pass away or whatever. But that was just like my first encounter with the actual voice of the Lord. And then like another time I think it was that same year why was seven so crazy but I I was afraid I was probably like seven or eight I was afraid of the dark like <laughs> my, all my brothers are like older than me and like my oldest brothers th were 13 years apart then the next one were 10 years apart then the other one were nine years apart so it's like I got only child syndrome so I was like always by myself so I'm like I was scared of the dark I ain't gonna hold y'all but I think it's because of those encounters. It's like, is something going to pop out? Is something or boy going to speak to me or something? So I think that's like what I had in the back of my mind. It's like, I need a nightlight on. I don't want to see nothing. Um, just for like my own sanity. So my parents gave me a nightlight. It was a little twin size bed. I was asleep. And like back then I used to sleep out. So my pillow was just like off the um, bed, but like on the nightlight. But it was on there. It ain't like these 
I actually got one right here. It ain't like these new ones these days. But it was like a actual one that was flammable. So my pillow was on it all night long to the point where it caught on fire. Like my pillow that I'm sleeping on is on fire. I don't know how long I was asleep. I don't know when the fire started, but like I was asleep in a fire. I don't know for how long or whatever, but <clears throat> I kind of woke up and was just like, oh, wow, flame. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm dreaming. So I'll go back to sleep and I'm like, I hear like a voice tell me like, of course I know it's God now. He was like, go tell your mom that it's a fire in your room. And I'm just like, okay, I guess so. So I go to my parents' room and I go tell my mom like, mom, it's a fire in my room. She's like, you just having a dream, go to sleep, go back to sleep. You can sleep in here if you're uncomfortable. So I lay down in her bed, in their bed and um. I lay down for two minutes. I'm like, no, ma, ma, it is a fire in my room. Like, I'm telling you, it's a fire in my room. So for context, <laughs> my mom worked in D.C. We're in Baltimore. So she had to wake up three and four in the morning every single day to get on a train to, like, get to work because who's driving to D.C. is very busy. So she's like, go back to sleep. Like, it's the weekend. Like, that's my only time to sleep. Like, stop <laughs> go to sleep so i'm like ma it's a fire in my room so she's like let me just get up and see what this girl is talking about so she gets up and goes to my room black smoke everywhere she's like ah so it was actually kind of funny looking back on it now like her reaction but the situation in itself is not funny so like she calls my dad we get it situated but even then it's just like i heard the lord speaking he preserved my life I'm sleeping in a fire for I don't know how long. I didn't have to go to the hospital. I didn't have any lung damage or anything. So that was like my first encounter of God, like being a preserver. I'm like, wow, I should have died in a fire. And it didn't even like affect the whole house. It was just specifically my room. And I'm just like, wow, God is good. Like the house I'm in now, actually, it's the other room because I moved in my brother's room. Old room is bigger, whatever. But it's just like... Even then, like, the Lord has, like, preserved my life. And I'm on, like, the last battery, so, like, let me change it real quick. And I'm probably going to have to change it again. So, I got a little bit of charge, but if I got to change the battery out, then that's what it is. Because I'm trying to keep this story moving. So, yes, after the fire, I was like, I don't want to die. <laughs> I'm not ready to come yet. Um, so, that's how I, like, knew the voice of God. So I think I'll just fast forward. Like, of course, throughout that time, I had like other encounters and things like that. But I will say like um, in church and stuff, I would like the pastor be preaching and I'll just be spaced out having like my own encounter and just getting different like revelations. Like I've always been like sensitive to environments and people and things like that like I've just I just naturally have um discernment and I'm inquisitive and I would just always ask questions like after church to like my dad and like both of my parents actually like what does this mean stuff like that and we'll just like they have different bible dialogue and stuff like that so I've always been the way that I am but fast forwarding to so that was about like seven eight I'm in church, like I'm sitting next to my grandmother. Um, um, having my own encounters is like, so yes, I am like a teenager, like 12 at this point. And I meet this boy. <laughs> so this is like my last year in middle school. I meet this boy. Eventually we get into a relationship or whatever. And it was the kind of thing where it's like, if you see me, you see him. If you see him, you see me. So I was like, I'm not thinking about God like that. Like, of course, God is very strong and I always feel his presence. I would describe it like God's presence was always on me, but I wasn't like filled. So it was like, I know God. I know the things he wants and the things he doesn't want. But here we go. We dying again. All right. So like I said, I'm, I'm at the point where it's like I know the things God wants, but it's like being shoved to the side. Cause it's like, God, I have a man now. Like and he's not even a man. <laughs> like we're in middle school, high school. Like we're no more than ninth and tenth grade. But <laughs> it's like, God, I have a man now. Like, <laughs> no. So um, 
and this like continued through like even after high school we ended up even in God's sovereignty I didn't go to like a four-year college but I went to community college and we ended up going to the same one so it's like our classes and our schedules kind of like was around the same time so it's like I would wait for his class to be done and then we just like go get food or whatever so it's like we was together like every day all day but it was to a point where um I felt like God was like calling me closer so at my church now we used to have we still do it sometimes but it's like every other twice a month but we used to have a Tuesday night Bible study um every week and it would be like a Sunday service but like on a Tuesday so we have like praise and worship and he would teach and it's like wait a second the God I encountered when I was younger I feel his presence strong at this church and this, I'm like not shading like my my home church or anything but it's just like the teaching was like my type of teaching it was just like <clears throat> it was deeper it was in the deeper things of God and it was like I like this so it's like I just kept coming and kept coming and the more I came the closer I got to God and then it was just like at that same time the God was with he was just like going out with his friends and they was just clubbing and doing, doing whatever they do and it was like the closer I got to God like the further I got from him and those are just like the beginning stages of um the Lord calling me closer to him but it's just who is this calling me but um where was I that call really messed me up so yeah I keep going and then it's like I'm gonna just start going on Sundays like my mom wasn't having it it's like you need to come to our church, um, the home church. So I was just, I was sneaking on Sundays, like after our first 8.30 service, because this was before COVID, Is like churches nine times out of 10 had two services. So it was like, I go to our morning service, go to their 11 o'clock service. I'm getting the best of both worlds. Like my mom ain't fussing at me for not being at our church, but I'm still getting the experience and the encounter. And then it just got to a point where I was just like, I don't even care. Like I'll just get fussed at. And I just was like, not going to my home church with where my parents and like my family was. Um, and I was just like, I don't care. Like I'm encountering God and I just want to keep this going. So, um, like I said, we're getting like, we're together every day physically, but my spirit is here. His spirit is here. And like, we're both say we're believers, but it's just like the getting deeper with God. And it was to a point where it was like, God was just like, you're just going to have to like make a decision. And I was just like, okay, but like, God, <laughs> my man. <laughs> and, and God was just like, me, it's like, you're going to have to choose. Um, so God kind of made me choose. So um, one day I was taking him to a job interview he had and we were driving in my car, my first car. <laughs> And we got in an accident with a bus. And like I saw my life flash before my eyes. Like I watched the whole accident happen in slow motion. And this is like a a, a city bus, so like an actual bus bus. And I watched it happen in slow motion. I saw the airbags come out. Like I felt me go forward, the whip, like I felt everything. And I was just like what would happen if I, if I, like in this moment I died? Like I'm saved, but it's like I'm not living up to like the standard God knows I can do. And I know I'm not living up to the standard I know I can do. So that was like my biggest wake up call to the point where I am now. Like I said, I've had my encounters when I was a kid. So like I know the voice of God and this encounter was like, and he was just saying like, you got to choose. It's going to be me or him. So that was like my wake up call, like, all right, God, you right, I'm choosing you. Um, so that accident was like life changing. Like I had chest, contu like it was nothing serious, but like I had chest contusions, the airbags came out, had to go in the ambulance to the hospital and all that stuff. So it was pretty serious. Um, and that was my wake up call. So then after that, I was like, all right, God, I'm all for you. And like, we just, broke up organically it wasn't like a 
a bad thing. Like we're to this day is like I have no problem with the guy. But it was just like God is number one. God is more important to me. So after that, I think that was about April. So in about I kept coming to my church where I go now. So I kept coming. Then in like August, I was like, I'm gonna get baptized. Like I really mean this thing. So no family was there. It was my decision. I felt the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I was he was just like, get baptized today. And I was a little hesitant because it's like none of my family was there. What's that? None of my family was there and or anything. And I was just like, I'm gonna just do it. And I did it. It was life changing. I got it on video and I sent it to my mom and she was like, Why would you do that? We weren't there and all that stuff. So <laughs> It was like a thing. And I'm just like, at this point, it's like, I'm grown. I can make my own decisions. It was like, you got to trust that your parenting and your spiritual guidance, like, led me to where I am. Like, but I understand as a mom, you want to protect your kid as much as possible. It is some like crazy churches and crazy preachers. So I understand. But I got baptized in August. So it was this. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm looking out my window, making sure nothing going down. Why is he staring at our house? Anyway, <clears throat> where was I? Yes, I got baptized that August. Then it was this crazy Sunday in September. It was like September 27th. I remember it clear as day. And like I said, at my parents' church, at my, at my home church, I've like never experienced like um, demons being casted out people uh speaking in tongues or like anything like a charismatic type church like of course they like shouted and stuff but it's just like like the bible like i'm reading acts and stuff at this point and i'm watching i'm like and there's nothing wrong with that church nothing wrong with the teaching but i'm just saying like i wasn't experiencing that so to experience it i was like oh wow this stuff is actually real so the one sunday in september like I said before, I don't know if I said it, but like my dad is a um, musician. So I've been around music. I just naturally, it just comes natural. So I'm singing on a praise team and we're singing, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon the cross. And that like, we were just looping it and looping it and looping it and looping it. And that thing would not let us go before I know it. I'm speaking in a whole nother language. And I'm like, like I'm singing and then it just happens. And I'm like, and it's like, I want to stop, but I can't stop. And it's just like, it's intensifying and it's intensifying. And I'm like, I'm not singing at this point. Nobody is, honestly. So I look over to um, my friend Jalen and I'm like, we're talking with our eyes because I can't stop. <laughs> so we're talking with our eyes and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not crying or anything, but it's just happening. And she's looking at me like, it's happening. <laughs> It was like one of the craziest moments of my life. And like, I've never experienced that. And like, ever since then, I'm like, oh, I knew God was real. But like, this is like real, 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 real. And dang, the camera about to die again. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. So I'm like, oh, God is real, real. And ever since then, it's like, I've been like completely like sold out, like, whatever God okay I'll do it so now it's just like I'm getting like introduced to like so I would word it as the God I was experiencing as a child is now being made manifest like in my regular everyday life and I'm like wow this is great and then I'm gonna just fast forward I think I'll save like my recent stuff for another video but Ever since then, it's just like I've been sold out. I've been like completely changed. Accepting Jesus was like the best decision I've ever made. Like I've always known him and his spirit was on me, but now he was actually like in me. So, yeah, that's just like a short version of it. I can give the longer version if y'all want like a part two or something. I can give y'all that. But, uh, yeah, I feel like. 
our experiences and things like that like lead us to a closer relationship with God like I like all things work together for the good so like anything you've ever experienced you've ever experienced like nothing is ever ever never ever ever wasted and like God can use anybody like he preserved me for whatever reason like I'm honestly still figuring it out like I have a a strong idea like I know my purpose but it's like getting it started is like a whole nother ball game is like it's one thing to know but then it's like to execute it and like walk out living by the spirit daily it's like I ain't gonna lie it's like a hard thing and like submitting and like picking up your cross daily and doing what God wants you to do and not what your flesh or what you think is best it's like a hard it's a thing so me being filled was just one thing but like walking this out and walking out his purpose for um my life is just a whole nother thing and like even now to like today in this video it's like I'm so uncomfortable doing this this is like completely out like out of my comfort zone like y'all see me in vlogs like being like goofy and silly and stuff like that but that's like I'm not really like that like I'm really like calm chill and stuff like I don't like going out like I'm introvert like I said I grew up like only child so I'm used to being by myself and like used to quiet so like talking and doing all of this is like is new for me honestly and even down to like certain prophetic words I got and just like confirmations that God gave me is like even in January like I was it was prophesied to me that I'm supposed to preach and I'm just like what God I barely like to talk <laughs> what do you what do you mean like I talk in spaces I'm comfortable in but like talking to a crowd or talking to people and telling them things you said and like no like I know the bible and stuff like that but that ain't something I, I Joel wouldn't pick that so like walking out <clears throat> what he wants you to do daily like it's it's really been like a challenge and that's just like a small very small five percent of my testimony and things like that but yeah all that to say God is sovereign. He's good. He's a preserver. Um, yeah, choosing him was like the best decision of my entire life. And I'm a down at hell. And I'm with God till like the day that I die for sure. Um, so yeah, like everybody has their own process and stuff. But like if you're not saved, like I'm praying you like you receive the gift of salvation. Like all have sinned. All have fallen short of the glory of God. Nobody is good. Only God is good. Only God is holy. But accepting him by faith, he makes you holy. He redeems you. He saved you. He seats you in heavenly places. Like his spirit in you makes you do his will. So, but it starts by like accepting him like as Lord and Savior. Like him as Savior is one thing. Like he saved you from sin and and hell and, and death like that's one thing that's amazing but him being lord over your life is life is a whole nother ball game it's picking up your cross daily it's doing things your your flesh typically doesn't want to do it's even in the small things like don't go here today and you wanted to go here today so it's just like him being lord and savior they gotta go hand in hand if you really like if you really want to walk this thing out and um yeah like I said all things work together for good like my experiences led me to where I am today and I just hope that my my goal and my hope in this video is just that like even a small glimpse of my testimony would like lead you to seeking him or even inquiring and wanting to know about him like just tasting and seeing like or, um, yeah, like tasting and seeing, like, who is this God that Joel is talking about? Like, I just pray that even like something I said or something I did would just like get you closer because God is relational. He died to have relationship with us. Like before, here I go preaching, like <laughs> sin separates us from God, but accepting Jesus, we have direct access. Like back then, um, in the uh, temple or tabernacle it was a veil but Jesus died to like 
tear the veil to have direct access. We can go to him boldly, as Jude says, boldly to the throne of grace. So, yeah, he, he died for that. And he wants us to have relationship and encounter with him. So I'm praying that you get saved. If you don't know how to get saved, you just accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You ask him to come into your heart. You confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And honestly, y'all, like, Jesus is coming back soon. He really, 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 really is. Like, all that stuff that's going on is like the beginning and the birthing pains, as uh, Roman says. It's like, it's the earth is groaning and is waiting for us to become sons and daughters of God. So it's like, this is the t perfect time to like rise up and get started and be in the kingdom and do like the work of God. So yeah, today was just one of them days where it's just like, all right, God, I'll be obedient and do this video. It's going to make me uncomfortable, but I'd rather soul saved or someone looking to Jesus because of one thing I said in my uncomfortability. Like, I don't care to be, un like, I care being uncomfortable, but it's like, I'd rather be uncomfortable if even if one soul is saved, like that was, that's good enough for me. But yeah, if you are saved already, like I'm praying that you have a deeper encounter and that you, yeah, you just go deeper and you like put your hands to the plow and like really get started and purpose because it's a lot of people out there who need God, who need to see the God in you and things like that, so yeah, that was my whole purpose. If y'all like me doing um, sit down videos like this, let me know. I can do more, whatever. Like y'all just let me know the topic. I can talk about it. Um, but if not, I'm gonna just keep vlogging <laughs> and y'all just gonna see that. But I just felt like this is where the Lord was leading me today. So um, by God's grace, I hope somebody was impacted, um, uplifted or something, so. Yeah, I will see y'all in the next video. I'm going to get my day started. Like I said, I just woke up and was just like, this is something that I feel like I should do. So now that this is out the way, I'm going to get my day started. Um, if y'all have any like questions or anything, like y'all can hit me in the comments. Y'all can DM me on Instagram. I'll put my Instagram um, in the comment section. But it's usually like in my outro. So if you just pause the outro. It's on there but if not i'll put it in the comment section anyway but yeah like i don't mind chit chatting like i'm open like to um answer any questions i can pray with you i can pray for you you can put any prayer requests like i'm down for it like whatever i'm down for it but yeah y'all i hope god was glorified i know he is glorified because he um he rewards like obedience and stuff. Not that I'm looking for a reward. I just literally just, I just want to please God, honestly. So yeah, praying the Lord was glorified. I will see y'all next video. Maybe it'll be a vlog. Maybe it'll be a sit down. Nine times out of 10, it'll be a vlog. So yeah, love y'all and I'll see y'all next video. Peace out.